Big Big Club. Four, 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 four. Big Big Club. Four. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Big Big Club. Robert Jesse Dominguez, Ash Tucker, Stephen Robert Dominguez. Believe in us. Believe in Big Big Club. Because we are too. This is Scott Perry with Texas Paranormal Recon. You are listening to the Bigfoot Club Podcast, the best place to encounter anything Bigfoot-related or not Bigfoot-related, such as witches like myself. Hi, everyone. I wanted to mention, if you are listening to Bigfoot Club on any of these platforms, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Stitcher, Google Play, Alexa, YouTube, Listen Notes, or Deezer, please give us a comment, a like, a subscription, give us a follow, and we appreciate it greatly. Also, please like and follow us on social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can find us by searching Bigfoot Club 1. That's Bigfoot Club and the number 1. If you have any paranormal, Bigfoot, or strange stories, please email us at BigfootClub1 at gmail.com. Again, that's BigfootClub, the number 1, at gmail.com. Please check out Matt Knapp's YouTube channel, Bigfoot Crossroads and Cryptid Tales. Also, give a listen to Nightcaller's Bigfoot Radio on YouTube with Lauren Smith. It's also available anywhere else you can listen to podcasts. So, if you enjoy the show and would like Bigfoot Club to keep making episodes, then perhaps you would consider supporting the show. You can do this by donating to our PayPal link, and any donation is accepted. These donations will support us in to continue bringing episodes and content. Once again, thank you so much for your support. <laughs> Hey everybody, Robert Jesse Dominguez, Bigfoot Club, Season 2, Episode 46. I'm here with Stephen and Ash. Hey guys. Hey. Hey. How's it going? It's going pretty, pretty It's, right it's going, now. the Mandalorian is finished. And yes. I'm uh, <laughs> happy that it's full closure with uh, the story, I guess. Yeah. yeah I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't know if he's... Maybe. <laughs> don't talk. Yeah. Don't say anything. Yeah. That's why, it's a good thing I stopped right there. Well, I was maybe. Like, Freeze. It can yeah. go anywhere from here. It, yeah. It, it can go anywhere from here, but, you know, I'm just, yeah. yeah. Just, um, that, that voice in the background, that is Brett Carson's. Hey. Um, hey. hey, Brett. How are you? Hey, nice to, nice to be on with you guys. Yes. I'm so excited to have you on. Um, let me just start off by saying I was on Crazy Cat Paranormal this past year. That was on episode three, and I think it was in May. And then I think you were episode six in June. And because I listen to John and Cecilia Clark's show all the time, I love those guys, by the way. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're super great people. And I overheard you talking about that show <laughs> on, on, <laughs> on their episode. So I was, I was, I was, you know, I was really, really flattered. And I was, uh, I was really happy that you were listening to that uh, podcast and stuff. So I just wanted to say that to you. Oh, that's so cool! Yeah, yeah. I, I, um, sometimes I'll get on a podcast, and since they're like you know a million podcasts, mm-hmm. and a million YouTube channels that are interesting and probably have like crazy value, like you know we we can't be aware of them all, and so you know I'll I'll find one and and uh, check it out, and it was like that that was cool. It was good to hear your your show because it also really kind of describe you as a person and your ideas about the paranormal and Bigfoot and all of that. And so it was, it's a, it's a different viewpoint than a lot of people have, I think like yeah. a lot of crossover crossover yeah. stuff. Yeah. Cause like I was, I started off in like in Bigfoot stuff and I was, uh, I was actually uh, recruited by um, Kendall Wilkerson to uh, jumpstart her group. And so she needed like a seasoned veteran researcher. And so she asked me like to step over and I did. And I was like super excited because I have always been interested in like in the, the paranormal. I just needed to a, a venue or somebody to learn off of. And so yeah. I, I end up I end up stepping across with her and 
you know, the rest was all is history. Cause like, you know, from our, from our perspective, I know I speak for Ash and Steven on this, but we, we, you know, we're kind of in this field just to help people and, uh, you know, help them cope and help them deal with either the paranormal or, uh, you know, Bigfoot stuff. So it's not for the big, big bucks, the huge no. money that's yeah. uh, rolling around there for, for paranormal people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you on the helping, helping people. Cause I mean, really that's that's what we got you know mm-hmm. so um so that's that's cool i wanted to ask you because i know people always ask you how how you get started and stuff but i was i was kind of interested in i wanted to change it up and i was kind of interested in uh how you started on the uh on this youtube journey that you're doing because it looks like i was i was watching uh you know a lot of your videos recently and they look like like we were just talking about helping people about helping like uh psychics and stuff so if you could talk about that that Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, usually it's the whole like, oh, where, when did you first figure out you're psychic and all of that stuff? And it's like, um, you know, the, the short version of that is like when I was a kid, I had paranormal experiences, probably like a lot of a lot of people out there. And then as an adult figured out exactly what was going on and all that stuff. So part of that journey turned into doing the YouTube stuff. Um, you know, I would, I would work with different paranormal groups and stuff like that. And, um, eventually they were kind of like, okay, we let's do, you know, let's do a video, let's do some video stuff and actually ended up with producers involved and things like that. And, um, like it kept escalating and it would be a bigger, bigger deal or, um, TV producers or something like that. And finally it ended up being, uh, working on the show, going to tombstone for a few days and having an incredible experience. And I mean, it was, it was nuts. The things that were happening, the spirit attack, um, the spirit approached us and was, uh, kind of asking for us to get his body out of the lines and the mines under Tombstone are, um, it's like they were all flooded um, with, I guess, groundwater or something, but also all sorts of like crazy toxins. Um, it's like super dangerous, you know, super toxic. And so um, there are, you know, miles and miles of these tunnels and they're submerged. And so there are certain areas where you can go and you can kind of explore the mines and, and you know, take guided tours because they don't want everybody just going in there because it is super dangerous. And there are parts that are out of the water and they're okay to cruise around and explore, but then there are whole areas that are underwater. And I guess this spirit is underwater. Ooh. And so the whole plan was we are going to do it and then uh, go back later and try to uh try to ex- excavate the body because we like we found exactly where it was and all all of this stuff but it's somewhere underwater down a tunnel so that was kind of like that was so much fun and i loved that and it that project got stuck in like um post production editing in this in this land that where nothing ever happens, you know? And so it never got completed. And I was just like, you know what? I want to, you know, I love doing this stuff and I think I'm pretty good at it. So I'm going to follow, follow along and like actually, you know, see if I can do my own thing here. And that kind of just spun into the YouTube channel. And, um, you know, mostly, I mean, what my goal is with the YouTube stuff is really I like to help people. And I feel like we're all, well, I feel like we're all psychic. We all have these abilities. And I think the world would be a better place if we all knew knew how to use it and knew that there was more out there for all of us. You know, I mean, like to live an existence without a knowledge or understanding that paranormal is real or that there is another side or, you know, that we, we live on after this life, you know, I, I think that would, that'd be a big bummer. And, you know, 
whenever you're you're doing these shows, um, are you? Is this you? Is it? Do you have a crew? Uh, do you do all the editing? Because uh, I'm just curious how you know how you just like just dove into it and just you know just started doing it with yeah with these. Um, well, I've been going. I was a. I have a background with uh, uh, video production and stuff. Mm, I worked okay. in Hollywood and did music videos back when that was a thing and commercials, uh, mostly involved in the uh, pre-production stuff. So just lining things up and working with the record labels and trying to line line up stuff for the director. And then, um, then like what I had always wanted to do, to do was teach. And so I moved into uh, teaching and I did that for a while. And then the paranormal stuff kind of took over and the psychic abilities and all of this stuff was um, (laughs) so major that I kind of had to pursue that, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't letting me not do it. And so I was doing that, but while I was teaching, I'm trying to (laughs) figure out what, (laughs) where I'm going on this tangent. Um, (laughs) When I was teaching during the summer, I used to go on long motorcycle rides. My wife would let me go because um, it was just like, it kept me sane and it, and it was very healthy for me. And I was like a new person uh, when I, when I came back from these, but I would go for, you know, two to four weeks out on my motorcycle all by myself and just go explore. And um, since I was a kid, I've always been into, the paranormal or Bigfoot or UFOs or, you know, you name it, all the stuff you guys are into. Right. And, you know, pursuing it since I was a little kid. And so I go out on these motorcycle rides and just, you know, I, I pick the haunted hotel to stay in. Mm. You know, if, if I find out, oh, the, supposedly there's a room here that's haunted, that's the one I want to get, you know, oh, <laughs> Eureka, California, or whatever. It's like, oh, okay, that looks like the spot to go for big foot, Bigfoot stuff. You know, I just kind of, you know, follow follow these places, and um, eventually it was kind of like, well, you know what? I should try filming it and see what happens. So I just I I filmed my ride, and things kind of worked. I mean, I just really put an emphasis on trying to have paranormal experiences or really I think I was following where my guides were directing me guides and spirits were telling me to go. And so I went and I filmed it and I've got experience with uh, doing editing and audio work. And so I just came home and learned how to use DaVinci resolve and started putting together my, my show. And so here I am. Hopefully, I'm improving. <laughs> it looks it looks really good. I mean, most of the videos that you have are they look very very uh, professional, and uh, I'm I'm enjoying watching them. So I just want you to know oh, that. Cool. So, um, but uh, I was going to ask you, um, you had like a, a you know Bigfoot experience? You know what? I've had a couple of, I've had like two or three experiences where it's like it was right there, but I didn't see it. I didn't have the experience. And, um, I've had some experiences, actually, I want to hear about, I want to hear your take on Bigfoot. Is this an animal? Is this a paranormal creature? Like what, what is Bigfoot? What do you guys think? Um, I think the answer is yes. (laughs) (laughs) It's both. Yeah. I think, uh, when, when I first got, when I first got into it, the, with the TBRC and Steven was, uh, with me most of the time, he was, he was very, very young. Uh, yeah. so he went with, you know, with us with outings and meetings and stuff like that. But whenever I first got into it, Luke Gross, which is my uh, mentor, uh, he thought it was, uh, you know, just flesh and blood, you know, that's what we just thought about it all the time. Yeah. I eventually left in like Oh two Oh three and I started doing my own stuff. And then I would, I would talk to, uh, you know, you know, native Americans and we would talk about, you know, uh, lore and all that stuff. And I started to believe it, it was like actually, you know, like a spirit. And so, I am very open now. And like in the past, people would come to me and talk to me about Bigfoot that they would see a portal open and a, a Bigfoot would step out and they would see like a different background, you know, different from, yeah, the, uh, yeah. you know, certain surroundings. And I would like, oh, I go, okay, whatever. And 
now I'm 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 more open to it. I'm because like I, you know why why wouldn't it be like a, a like a ghost Bigfoot or mm-hmm. a, you know spirit of a Bigfoot? So it makes sense. Yeah. I'll let Stephen and Ash answer. So uh, yeah, I think it's a elusive elusive animal. Um, I mean, I've read it. I've read or come across theories where it's aliens left behind, mm-hmm. and yeah. they just you know they just happen to adapt to I guess the woods. Um, heard it's demonics or like de- any like anything demonic activity or bad ghosts or whatever. Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, like Robert, I am open to pretty much all that. It could it could be this, could be that. You don't, we don't know. We we obviously don't know. Yeah, yeah. Ash, that's so complicated. <laughs> 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 that's why I'm throwing it over to you guys. Yeah. Like, hey. <laughs> I want to hear what you guys think. I mean, Ash, Ash, and I, Ash and I, and Steve, we've all we've all been in the field together, mm-hmm. uh, and we've we've uh, you know experienced uh, you know Bigfoot throwing rocks at us and doing tree knocks mm-hmm. and screaming at us That's and stuff like that. So uh, we've we've had that like in uh, East Texas. So, um, but yeah, I'm actually open to a lot of stuff. So I mean, I'm like I'm again like I'm kind of into it just to help people you know deal with it and not you know document so much. I was in the past, but now I'm just more into to helping people deal with it. Like yeah. whenever they reach out to us, we're like their, their last resort because either their, their family members or the local authorities don't, don't believe them or trust them. So whenever they're reaching out to us, that's, you know, they're, mm-hmm. they're at their, at their last string. So. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm from, I mean, I'm in L I'm in LA. So, mm-hmm. You know, we don't have a whole lot of Bigfoot lore going on here. Although, um, in our in the Angeles National Forest, that's like right here on the edge of the city, uh, there are reports of all sorts of crazy things and cryptids, and uh, there are Bigfoot reports from like just right outside of the city. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's not totally foreign to me, but you know, I'm not in a place where anybody talks about Bigfoot. Nobody has sightings or anything here unless they were like way out somewhere and um, like camping or hunting or whatever. I imagine so, it's probably like a lot more north of the, of, of the state. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Most of it I think is way up there. Um, although I went, this was, this was like within the past year. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wife and I, Crystal, um, we went hiking up um up just in the hills right north of Los Angeles and we're we're hiking along and everything and um we ended up going through this area and i remember looking down and seeing a uh human foot a human footprint mm-hmm. and i i just totally dismissed it and there's like nobody hikes barefoot around here or runs around these areas or anything like that. And it wasn't one of those, um, Vibram like footprints, Mm -hmm. the Vibram shoes. Um, so, you know, it was kind of, it was kind of weird because I mentioned it to Crystal and we just kept going. I didn't stop to look at it. And that's the kind of thing that would draw my attention. And, um, that kind of, that's, it's kind of an example of, an elusive quality that uh, Bigfoot sightings and UFOs and even some paranormal stuff, it has this elusive quality. And it's like um, observers or people coming up up on this kind of thing, Mm -hmm. they'll see it and they'll remark on it. And then it's just totally gone. Like it's kind of like they do the um, men in black, the pen with the little light on it, you know, they wipe the white people's the brain brains. Out, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and so like, it's like, dude, I, I, I'm totally the kind of person that would stop and look at it and at least look at the size of it. And I always have cameras with me. So I would have taken a picture just to see like, well, what is this exactly? Why is there a footprint right here? Was it, but, was it bigger than yours? Uh, probably. Okay. But it was kind of one of those things where, yeah, I just, it was like, oh, look, a footprint. And I just walked on. Um, is that is that Bigfoot or anything different 
nah, it's just really curious. I mean, I, I don't know what it was. But there are like UFO sightings and stuff like that where people look at it and there will be a group and they'll like kind of remark at it. And then five minutes later, nobody even remembers it happening. Like there will be like one person in a dozen that's like, yeah. what's the deal with that? Yeah. Like, Did you guys see that? And they're like, yeah, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if there's some some like, you know, these aren't the droids you're looking for. <laughs> kind yeah. of thing going on yeah. when you see something like this yeah you know i, I wouldn't be surprised but you know because like i know like for a fact and I, I know i've said this on another podcast but whenever we we're i was with the uh, tbrc we, we we would go to uh area like in east texas called uh suffer springs and so we were going down this one road that we would go and it was like really rural it was like a gravel road and when i think we went there like, like three or four times in one year like the fourth time we went um i guess we we got there we parked and as soon as we like got our gear out um park park rangers showed up huh. and they were like i think they had like put sensors on the road and so we were like you know doing research in that area for like that like for six months and all of a sudden they just started showing up and started saying, Hey guys, hey, what are y'all doing? Hey, what are you doing? You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That happened huh. outside at Cooper Lake too. So, so we were, uh, looking for owls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah, I, nice. I think, nice. uh, at first I still like, uh, like Ash was saying, I, I say, you know, we're like, you know, researching Bigfoot. And after a while I kind of like wised up and said, Hey, I, cause I was going to school at the time at a school ID. I said, Hey, I'm, doing a paper on uh, deer migration so just doing soil samples yeah. I was like, There's yeah. no deer here. most of the time if they just seen that we didn't have a gun or anything like that yeah you know like we're out in the woods we got parabolic discs and cameras yeah. so yeah. i mean we're yeah. filming a we're movie s- we're studying yeah. wildlife you know yeah yeah <laughs> we're doing a video yeah <laughs> we're trying to go viral yeah <laughs> oh no this was before that was yeah. it. wrong answer <laughs> before vine <laughs> But uh, yeah, that's interesting. Um, so that was was that was that the only uh, incident you had about you know? No, you know what? That was just something I something that popped in it, popped into my head mm-hmm. about like this elusive quality, and I feel like there are a bunch of things out there that have this have this quality where you know they they wave their hand and you forget it, you forget it exists or you forget what happened or the details become fuzz. Fu- fuzzy mm-hmm. that's the word i'm looking for <laughs> um and so um like i've had i've had a few experiences where my spidey sense is like going off mm-hmm. um one time was up in canada up in the yukon i guess wow um, was it yeah yukon? it was somewhere cool <laughs> somewhere cool up there yeah out out of uh white horse mm-hmm. and i uh i was looking for a place to camp it was like kind of Late in the day, and this was my one, my big ride up to the uh, Arctic Circle on my motorcycle, and nice. so I'm like, okay, nice. I'm gonna I'm gonna go find a cool place to camp, or you know, oh there are these cabins, there are these cabins that are advertised on some sign, and it says, oh follow this road. So I follow the road forever, and I come up to these cabins and pull into the parking lot. And talk to the owner, and he's like, "Yeah, these they're closed." And it's like, "But you can camp right down there by the lake. There, you know, just follow this until it dead ends, and people camp down in this area." So I follow down, follow this dirt road down to the lake, and um, I'm out in the middle of nowhere, or at least <laughs> to me, it feels like the middle of nowhere. And uh, you know, I, I ride around this little area. I've, it's basically like a glorified dirt bike that I've got. And so I can I can go off-road and all this stuff. But I'm riding around this area kind of looking for, like, okay, well, where do I want to set up? You know, what feels comfortable to me? Because something's not right. And I finally find a spot, and there is a, um, there's a little fire pit, little, you know, stones around a, a little ring of stones, and there's also a uh, a tree stump that's been cut off right there, and you know it looks pretty flat. It looks like the place to set down your your uh, tent and everything. And it's like, okay, cool. So I pull off, you know, take off my helmet, all that stuff, 
and you know walk down walk down into this area and i look in the fire pit just to see like how recent has somebody been here and stuff and then i go over to the the tree stump and it's this uh like three foot and eh, maybe maybe like two and a half foot um wide tree stump and it's totally flat on the top and it has like evenly spaced all over the whole thing are like pull tabs like just a pull tab just sitting there and then next to that is like a shotgun shell and next to that is like a piece of broken glass and this whole thing is just like like evenly spaced little pieces of junk and like you know a piece of a rubber band or whatever just all over this all over the top of this <laughs> this uh tree stump and it's just like it i just started getting the weirdest sense mm-hmm. i was like you know what something is watching me right now and it i know what ghosts feel like i know what spirits feel like i even know what like fairy feels like and this was something else this was like really freaky and I felt like something was watching me and the stuff on the tree stump, like nobody in their right mind would just pick up this kind of trash and set it like, um, they set it on this thing like with, with passion or something like they, they valued these little pieces of junk. And it's like, that is not human. That is so not human. And, um, it freaked me out enough that I hopped on my bike and got out of there. And <laughs> I ended up, I basically ended up messing, messing myself up with, uh, like turning and going down, going down the highway. Instead of going to town, I ended up going down the highway looking for a place to camp or something. And everywhere I went, it was like, you know, campground was closed because there were too many like grizzlies in the area mm. and all Allegedly. this stuff and I was like yeah. okay great Allegedly. so I was like yeah six hours later I'm like sleeping behind a gas station <laughs> <laughs> but it was I mean it was like it was freaky enough to push me on like to ride a long time after that but that one that one like I am positive that that was like a big foot it wasn't anything else like that had to be something like that. And, um, you know, I've, I've kind of looked around to see if like Bigfoots do stashes of like their valuables or things they find mm-hmm. important to them. And so, I mean, that one, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go on the record and say, oh yeah, that's a Bigfoot. Right. But the, the feelings, the vibes I had and how creeped out I was, like that was that was something else because i know in the past i've done some stuff in in uh paris texas and you know we would go on uh this areas on like the woods and we would like track way way like into the woods and i would leave like uh whatever it was um growing in that area and i would leave in like in uh you know crook of a tree and i would i would walk off and i would come back later on the very next day and uh the food item would you know you know, would be gone. It'd be like a shiny rock in there. Wow. Or maybe it's like some herbs. Yeah. Or something. So we used to do that all the time and we would get like, you know, them to interact with us in that, in that way all the time. And it was like, so whenever you were telling this story about this, putting stuff down with, with like passion, it kind of, it kind of, you know, rained home to me about that particular event that happened to me whenever I was in the woods. So. Yeah. I don't, um, I don't think it was trying to ke- creep you out. I don't think it was just, like a, a peace offering yeah. that they saw that was valuable. Like, I don't know, like it's their way of communicating saying that, Hey, you're, you can, you're welcome. You can, right. You can rest here. Yeah. And as soon as they saw you leave, they probably got their feelings hurt. But I don't know. But it was, it was probably <laughs> for like the person that was there before, before Brett. Yeah. Pro- yeah. Probably. Yeah. 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 Probably before so, Brett. So. Probably. Or I don't know. Like <laughs> this is one of those things that you could, could be a big food. Could, it could be a homeless guy. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I'd still yeah. be wary in Alaska. Yeah, because they sound pretty built different up there. Yeah, oh, yeah. like everything yeah. else, they're a lot more. Uh, 
they're like aggressive and bigger yeah, and, and stuff bigger like and stuff. Yeah. So. But yeah, you don't want to be like Albert Hosman and be, yeah. be carried away and stuff. So no, <laughs> but no, um, no. Uh, no. But that's interesting. It um, is because I'm. I don't think I've ever heard that you tell that story before. No, no. This is first this time is for. Yeah, exclusive, exclusive, <laughs> exclusive <Yeah>. club. <laughs> so oh. we keep um, getting those. I wanted to ask uh, the question: What you know to our listeners? What's the difference between a psychic, a median, and a empath? Um, empath. A medium. Medium. Sorry. Medium. You know what? I, I lump them all together. There's okay. a difference between a psychic and a medium. Um, and psychic is the overall term, um, and. That's basically somebody that's kind of reading or feeling the energy. Mm-hmm. And so it's picking up on energy of the room or um, like kind of in the environment or of other people or something like that. Or it can be in time or whatever. A medium is kind of somebody that works as a medium, a medium of communication between sp- the spirit world and our world. Or the living, I guess. And so a lot of people say that, you know, you can be a psychic, but not necessarily a medium. But um, to be a medium, you're going to be both a medium and a psychic. But I think pretty much, I think everybody that's communicating with the other side, everybody that's getting information from the other side, if they are contacting or in communication with their uh, spirit guides, and everybody's got one, uh, if we're getting that kind, that kind of information, I think we're mediums. I mean, it's not a big leap to go from talking to spirit guides and then talking to spirits or other kinds of entities. And um, with uh, Bigfoot stuff, um, my answer to the whole what is it, I think it's transdimensional. It's either using portals or it can flip in and out of like a uh, physical reality. Cause I've seen something, I don't know what it was. It wasn't human. <laughs> and, um, I, it could have been ET or fairy or something like that, but I've seen something that was physical that, uh, turned invisible and then I could sense it, uh, psychically and basically chased it. But like, there was interaction and all that stuff, but I think Bigfoot's probably the same kind of same kind of thing. Whenever, whenever you sense, like like you were saying, you were sensing him. Do you feel like, do you feel like uh, it's angry or curious or it's you know bothered? Or, yeah. yeah. Um, with this thing that I saw, it was curious. I was sitting in my room and I'm like watching TV or something like that, but like just like chilling in some chair. And this being looks through the doorway, like ducks in through the doorway and looks at me, like looks right at me. Mm -hmm. And I look at it and it ducks back out of the door. And then it ducks back in and looks again. And like by this time, I'm like, what? What (laughs) And I'm up out of my chair and heading towards it. And it, it darts out of my like darts out of my room or out of the doorway. And it's invisible. And I'm following this, this, I mean, I can see it in my mind's eye or I know where it is and I'm like, follow it to the dining room and, and basically having a conversation. But that was, uh, that was, whatever that was, was curious. Mm -hmm. The, uh, Bigfoot with the stump or whatever it was with the stump, that thing was really scary. That was like, I wasn't supposed to be there or something like that. And I don't really have that kind of response to most most kinds of entities out there. I want to find out what they are. I'm I'm going to pursue it. You know, I'm more curious and actually even kind of playful with whatever's out there. So that was that was interesting to have that kind of response. Kind yeah. of points to um, the David Politis kind of missing four one one. Oh God. Um, yeah. scariness you know yeah i watched both of those and like i bought this book about things like that too and it's just it's nuts because it's obvious that it happened there's these people just yeah disappear gone yeah 
or, or are they <clears throat> if they find them, you know, they after they've died, it's just there's no way. It's like mm-hmm. what? They were right there. We were right here and and just all kinds of cases like it's it's insane. Yeah. It's really scary. It is. <laughs> that stuff is that stuff's like the um not the stuff you want to listen to, like when you're heading out on a solo camp trip or something. Yeah. No, probably not. <laughs> it's like, no, but I don't want to listen to that. No. That's... I was going to ask, and this is kind of a strange yeah, question. Yeah. Since you're, you're saying you're sensing the uh, possible Bigfoot, what's, what's, is it different? Because I heard on your, on your um, shows that you talk about demons and angels and stuff. Kind of compare it to that. If it's a Bigfoot and Ooh. demons and angels, are they similar sense that you pick them up as or no or just i'm just curious um with with demons and angels like the main with normal people (laughs) i'm abnormal with normal people um they have like they can feel it you can feel it and this is me talking about being abnormal or whatever um what i'm talking about is my um when I started having experiences with, uh, angels and demons, like my experience with demons, I freaked out and I like, I was throwing up. My stomach was sick. Like I was, I was a wreck. Right. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I found out that angels were real. And, um, like the first time I saw Archangel Michael, um, I, it's like seeing a statue or the way the way it was presented to me was like looking at this gigantic statue. And I start at the starting at the feet. I start to look up and I get to maybe about the knee or something like that. And I'm like, I'm just like, I've lost it um, out of like the joy and the grandeur coming from coming from this angel. And so I'm like emotionally just worthless at this point you know, like crying because it's so beautiful and all this stuff. And I've had these kinds of experiences where I'm experiencing something really negative and like that makes me like actually ill, physically ill. And I get headaches and nauseous and like I can't see well and all these things. Or I see something that is heavenly or holy or something like that. And I become worthless. Like I'm useless as a, as a psychic or as a medium or something like that. And so I think it was my team. I think it's my spirit guides who I call my team. I think they've actually kind of tampered down my sensitivity with, um, feeling, you know, feeling the, um, like ecstatic kinds of feelings or the illness and like really discomfort. So like, I don't feel it like that. And so, um, a normal person in this, I think this is anybody, I think anybody that's just paying attention to their feelings or paying attention to what they're like, the impressions they're getting, if they're around a demon or whatever, they're going to feel, they're going to get a headache. They're going to feel nauseous. They're going to feel sick to their stomach and, you know, or in their chest and they might feel just this fear that doesn't make any sense. And, um, and it's a very specific kind of feeling. Um, and then the same thing with seeing something that's like miraculous or wonderful, like you're going to be so overjoyed or almost euphoric or whatever. And so, it's like you will feel those kinds of uh, entities um, with fairy. Um, it's a different kind of feeling. I don't know. I don't know how I would describe it. Um, it feels very, um, very child, childlike, um, like not like the, the seriousness is on another level, like a different kind of level. Um, than normal people. It just feels a lot like a normal person. And uh, the presentation of ghosts can be anything, like it, it can be something that's kind of distorted that a lot of people will mistake as being demonic or something because they'll see something like, you know, this really distorted figure. 
And it might be that that person has been around long enough and they're kind of um, changing their presentation into something that looks pretty nasty or distorted. So I don't even know what the question was at this point. <laughs> <laughs> the, que- the, the but, uh, question Bigfoot. was Bigfoot. Bigfoot. How does Bigfoot feel? In comparison, um, in comparison think, to angels and demons. Um, I think it feels more along the lines of fairy energy. Okay. And um, That's interesting. Oh, and, and aliens are another feeling too. Mm-hmm. And I've, I had somebody describe it to me and I think they hit, they hit what it feels like the most mm-hmm. it's kind of chemical or uh, metallic or I don't know, less organic than, than other kinds of beings. Hmm. And um, Bigfoot, I, I think probably feels more in line with the fairy kind of energy. Um, that's not me saying that I think it's fairy or mm-hmm. something, right? Because I do think there's a big connection between Bigfoot and uh, UFOs or ETs. Because there's just there are too many reports that seem to ring true to me with that and Bigfoot. Mm-hmm. And I have had I've had another place where the spirits have talked about. Actually, I've had two other places where uh, spirits around me have talked about. Uh, Bigfoot being around or the potential of Bigfoot. And um, so they are aware of it. Um, I don't think I felt anything too different. Um, I don't know if I actually even really felt Bigfoot. But, um, yeah, I think it's more of a fairy kind of feel. That's interesting. That's very interesting. I like I mean, it makes right. it makes sense because they're they're in the woods. I mean, it's just that's just me. So, and yeah. just like the things that they do, yeah, like snatching kids, and yeah, you know, and like the gift exchange and the way huh. they communicate and stuff. Like you know, you appease them and then they're not mad at you, and you know, yeah, yeah. From what I understand about fairies, you do not want to don't want to mess with them. Don't cross them. No. So <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, I've, I've never this put book, in, again, never made a connection there. So that sorry. I have about like children being snatched and stuff. That's one thing that they touch on a little bit in there too, is that, that maybe that's what it is. Is it's a, just a type of faith. Huh. Cause I, I've heard lots of stories of, of, you know, Bigfoot's taking kids and, them end up being, you know, being dead somewhere else or and then them coming back. So, I mean, it's, that's not, you know, I'm not yeah. surprised with that. So, so I think it's all just a little, it's all kind of the same, just a little, little bit different and it's all together, you know? Yep. Now I'm going to throw yeah. you a question. Okay. Robert, do you think that there are Bigfoot serial killers that kill their own kind? Um, you know, if if they do, it's probably not reported. It's probably like up in that area that Brett was talking about, like in uh, you know, you know, Yukon and areas that that there's like massive, massive, you know, miles of of nothing, and there's probably like Bigfoot up there, probably that do it up there, and it never gets like like reported or something. But I wouldn't doubt it though. Yeah, because they're well, I mean they're almost almost human like and. Well. Even like uh, chimpanzees, you know, we watched that thing that yeah. Jane, o- Jane Goodall reported on that they had a, a literal war, like a war, yeah, where they were they were planning stuff out, they were planning stuff and like assassinating their leaders from the op- opposing, like yeah, they were all kinds they were singling like, them you know, out, they're singling them out and killing yeah, them yeah, so with rocks like, and it's sticks, kind of like like that. I wouldn't say okay, maybe not a serial killer, but like you know, to do something like that to. Yeah, to kill its own kind. You kill its own mm-hmm. kind. For whatever reason, I mean. Yeah. Kill your own kind. <laughs> <laughs> Stop doing the, uh, interview, with the interview with the vampire. <laughs> oh, God. I love it, but it is. Yeah. What's that? Stephen, Stephen Ray? Yeah. Stephen Ray? Yeah. 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 Oh, <laughs> man. Um, <laughs> Brett, sorry. We're, yeah. we're, we're, like, we're just goofy, man, sometimes. Yeah, so. yeah that's great. <laughs> that works. So, um... I wanted to ask you also, because um, I know you were talking about on some of, some of your videos about helping helping spirits cross over. Because I heard you talk about 
there are some spirits that just like linger and just hang out, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, have you had a case where you end up going to go help somebody and you had to help someone cross over? Yeah, you know, I, I think a lot of my rides turn into just doing that. Um, early on, I started out and I was doing, um, you know, I would do paranormal investigations or I would um, be out doing my thing, just kind of seeing seeing what's out there. And um, it would kind of turn into a spirit rescue situation. And I think it has to do with my manner or maybe my appearance or whatever. I'm just like a regular dude out there doing my psychic thing. And so spirits are more likely to approach me. And so I would have spirits approaching me and they would be like resistant to going going to heaven because they weren't religious enough or something like that. And um, I had an experience where like my first experience of um, rescuing a spirit was somebody wanted me to um, figure out what was going on at their restaurant, at the restaurant where they worked because there was a spirit and they were in there throwing around pans and they would do all sorts of things at night and they'd come in and things would just be all over the place. And so I kind of tuned in and ended up finding this dude that was there. And I guess he had lost his family in a car crash or something like that. And I mean, this is a spirit I'm talking about, but he had lost Mm -hmm. his family and then he had died or something. And he was just staying at this uh, restaurant and I was kind of, connecting with him and talking to him and kind of had to like break him out of this um, repetitious like funk he was in and um, basically got him to acknowledge me and talk to me and kind of tell me about what, you know, why is he here? What's he doing? And it was just, he was, um, he was just totally upset, like devastated by his family dying and for whatever reason hadn't crossed over and gone into heaven. And so I started talking to him and I'm like, it's okay, you can go. And I think that normally when people die, um, there are angels there right there ready to escort them to heaven. And a lot of times family members will show up and they'll be there and you know, it's like cool reunion maybe the spirit will hang out and go to their funeral or whatever. And then they usually go up to heaven. And so with this, this dude, like I finally like made a breakthrough and I was with crystal at the, at the time. And we were just in a car. We were waiting to go do something. And she was like, Oh yeah, can you take care of that thing for John (laughs) or whatever? It's like, okay, let me do this. So, I tune in, I connect with the dude. He's telling me about his dead family and like devastation. And I start crying. I'm just like losing it. This is before my, before my team turned off my, this sensitivity. So I'm talking, talking to him crying. And then all of a sudden he's like, okay, I'm ready to cross over. And a white light portal opens up and it's basically like a hallway with this, white light and they're like generations of his family lining the walls like as deep as I can see I don't know how many generations this is but the love and like the love coming out of this just this portal like instantly had me like I was crying because I was like I was euphoric I was feeling it I couldn't Like I couldn't even contain myself. And so like I'm watching over the shoulder of this guy as he goes into, into the portal and he goes in and then he's through and I'm, I pop out of my trance or, or a psychic state. And I'm just like, I'm like laughing and just giggling for like hours after this and trying to ground myself so I can, so I can function. But I mean, it was, it was crazy. And so that was like my first experience with that crossover kind of thing. And I had done it with other spirits who had just kind of happened upon me. And 
uh, you know, for whatever reason, they just needed an assurance that it's okay for them to go. And I do think it's okay for everybody. I think everybody, like, no matter how rotten you've been here, or it appears that you've been here, um, I think you can go over and basically you're given counseling or you're put in a, you're put in a place where you can kind of get through it. And it might take a while. I mean, this is me talking in, uh, you know, earth terms like time and stuff. Cause I don't know mm. how time works in reality, but, um, like they'll go over and they're given help and they can get through it and then, you know, continue with whatever they do in the afterlife. And so I just kind of, I kind of started doing that and spirits would come to me and just seek help. And then, um, I think my team of spirit guides expanded into, um, angels and stuff that could take care of these folks. And so now I like on these rides, I'll go around and there's a whole lot going on behind the scenes that not even I'm aware of. And I'll catch on to little bits of it and, It's spirits coming and seeking help. And I've got angels that are like escorting them up. And so it's funny because in some of these things, I'll hear them talking in EVPs and the spirits will be, you know, it's like, okay, do I have permission to talk to Brett? You know, do I have permission to be on audio? This kind of thing. Um, being on camera is like kind of a no, no, um, according to what I'm, what I'm hearing. And I think it's, I think these are like permission from heaven or from the angels, whether or not they can do this stuff. But the stuff I'm hearing is that my guides are kind of like, yeah, you can talk to Brett and do this stuff for a little bit. And then uh, once he's finished, we are going to take you up. We'll take you up to heaven. So everybody's all pretty excited and stuff. And that I sit there and I ramble or, you know, I'm, I'm off base or whatever, doing my psychic <laughs> thing and filming. And as we wind up, spirits are heading up to heaven. And so I don't know. It's a, it's a trip. Um, that is interesting. Um, mm-hmm. I, yeah. I, I did hear on one of your shows that you were saying about, about you don't, um, broadcast like the spirits names and, you don't, because um, like you heard you also say that, like you were just mentioning a while ago that they don't want to be photographed or videotaped because they don't, they don't want us to know that something like that or something. Yeah. Yeah. Something close to that. Yeah. You know, that's something that I haven't heard anybody else talk about, but I think that also goes along with that. We talking about that elusive nature of mm-hmm. the, you know, seeing a Bigfoot a footprint or something like that or a UFO and kind of then going into a, a trance or something and being like, what? I didn't see anything. Yeah. I think there's, I think overall with the other side and with uh, dimensional stuff, or I mean, maybe we just say non-physical things. Um, we, I think we aren't supposed to know. And through my, my stuff, I hear them talking about, like, you know, no cameras, like turn off the camera. And they're like constantly talking about, uh, turning off the, turning off the cameras or I hear them saying, you know, don't break the camera and stuff like that. And they don't, uh, but they talk about whether or not they're going to be seen on camera or, uh, recorded on audio. And, um, I've actually heard somebody say no evidence, Um, it, uh, in one of the recent things I did, uh, I was talking to a spirit and, um, I, I heard, I heard somebody else say, you know, and this is in EVP saying, you know, no evidence. And so I think that they're really, they really don't want to, um, give us really solid evidence that they're there or that stuff is going on. And I think it might be, I mean, this is all speculation at this point, Mm -hmm. but I think it's just so we remain really attached to our physical lives, our physical reality, because, you know, if, if we're aware that there's something outside of the, the movie or the game that we're in right now, 
then we're, you know, it, it could be that our existence is less important. If we don't like this, this movie, we just, we stop and we put on another movie or something. And so maybe it lessens our experience to, uh, have too much evidence of stuff going on on the other side. Wow. That's, uh, that's, that's, I don't know. That's an interesting take. I, I like that though. Yeah, it makes it more difficult for us, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One question, and you can probably edit this before the yeah the thing. Um, Brent, are you able to tell the difference between uh, a spirit that hasn't crossed over, obviously, or a spirit that is who already crossed over and they're just here to be someone's like guardian angel or just checking up on a loved one? Yeah, you- yeah. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Um, yeah, there are the there are like ghosts who are um, spirits who are earthbound, and uh, they've usually got. Um, let's see. I'm trying to come up with how to describe the difference between like the earthbound ghost versus the spirit that's just visiting from heaven. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times, the well, the spirits who have been to heaven, they've got it kind of sorted out a little bit better. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of a cleaner, a cleaner energy, um, a m- more understanding. They seem to have it together because they're self-aware. They s- like they know. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. They've got the big picture. Mm-hmm. And then you take, uh, you take ghosts and some aren't, you know, most ghosts are here because it's they've been through some sort of trauma that has them like emotionally stuck. And I mean, just like they're so devastated by something happening that they can't even get out of their sorrow. You know, it's mm-hmm. just being so self self absorbed in whatever the emotion is. And so they didn't like, they aren't aware or they're afraid of something or, you know, there are spirits who will stick around just so they can do stuff on earth that they didn't get a chance to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I've met spirits that are um, like basically going on vacation and stuff. But um, a lot of times ghosts have some sort of issue going on. And once they get up to heaven, once they get taken care of, then they can come back down and can visit from time to time. Um, I don't know if they have like if they can just always just pop in and, and, uh, see what we're doing or, you know, Mm -hmm. say hi. (laughs) Right. Um, cause I think they've got more stuff that they have to do up there and they kind of don't want to interfere too much with our lives here and what we're trying to accomplish. Um, but yeah, I mean the, the feeling is, uh, a clarity. There's more of a clarity with spirits who have been to heaven and are visiting. So okay. hopefully yeah. that gets it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Brett, we're, we're coming up on an hour of us talking. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I wanted to ask, is, is there anything like, how does, how does one, um, how does uh, our listeners get to you, you know, get, get to listen to your, to your shows or does, doesn't your, is, is your wife have a book out too? Yeah, she does. Uh, her name is Crystal Hope Reed and mm-hmm. she does how to live with a psychic. That's you. And and that was me. Yeah, that's me. And it's, uh, yeah, and it's, I think the subtitle is something like, you know, uh, what to do when your significant other becomes weird or something, something like that. I yeah. can't, can't remember. But uh, yeah, it's, a, it's really good if you're developing or if you live with somebody who is developing or actually, I mean, it's, it's pretty good for anybody who is is psychic or who is, you know, having these kinds of experiences because we've noticed a lot of people, a lot of breakups yeah. when, when one person starts to open up or have these wild experiences and the other person doesn't. So her book is available on Amazon. So okay. Good deal. go track that down and, uh, to see my stuff, the stuff I'm really excited about is my YouTube my YouTube channel and um, you can search for me through haunted medium or it's my name. Um, and I've got a website, brettkarstens.com. 
Okay. So you can track me down that way. And I do readings and mostly I focus on clearing and cleansing and spirit rescue stuff, teaching, uh, those kind of things. So yeah, I'm Um, always, I'm always down to, to meet new people and all that stuff. So awesome. Awesome stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I was really, I was really excited about having you on. So I was, I think the guys here know that how giddy I was. (laughs) Cool, man. (laughs) Um, uh, Brett, thanks for coming on, man. I really, really appreciate it. Um, hey, I really enjoyed it. Um, we'll we'll try to have you back on, man. Oh yeah, yeah, that'd be fun. Okay, yeah, that'd be cool. All right, yeah, um, I've, I've loved loved being loved talking to you guys. Absolutely. Um, so we're gonna call it a night, and and thank you, man, for being on. Thank you. All right. Hey, take care, of you guys. All right. You yeah. too. <laughs> I must bid you adieu, and so goodbye, <laughs> and good night, bye.